This video will discuss stellar interiors and especially interior of the sun, how that information is obtained, and talk about computer models of stars. In a, another video, the mass luminosity relationship will be discussed. So we have a problem in trying to gain data on the interior of the sun, and that is the material is very dense underneath the photosphere, and light does not uh, penetrate directly or leave directly from those underneath layers uh, into space. So you know, how can astronomers learn about something they can't see? The photosphere, the material is dense enough at the bottom of the photosphere to block light from traveling. Well, geologists face kind of a similar problem. How can they learn about the interior of the Earth if they can't go there? That's only been done in science fiction, uh, going to the interior of the Earth. But uh, you're probably aware that seismology exists, and uh, geologists use earthquake waves or other waves that are generated to study the interior of the Earth. Uh, waves, not sunquake waves, but uh, waves generated by turbulence inside the sun. Uh, it creates waves that travel about the sun and can reveal different properties about the sun's interior. So we have this field called helioseismology. That's where we're studying the interior of the sun, or asteroseismology, you know, studying the interior of stars. And this can be accomplished by the study of how sound waves cause at the photosphere uh, motion, rising and falling motion over a much bigger area than the granules. But uh, these sound effects can be observed from the Doppler shift of absorption lines from the photosphere. And astronomers can tell the region that is uh, coming towards the Earth, the region that's moving away from the Earth. And these sound waves that travel through the sun reveal information uh, about four uh, aspects and, and more. There's more that can be revealed, but we'll just talk about these four. But the waves travel at different speeds if the temperature is different. So that provides a probe uh, observing how the waves propagate through the interior of the sun and can give us information about temperature, astronomers' information. I don't do this type of work. Um, the sound uh, speed depends on the pressure and the density and the composition. So these four quantities uh, produce observable effects at the photosphere as these waves roam back and forth across the sun and through the sun. So astronomers can get information on the temperature underneath the photosphere inside the star, the pressure, the density, and the composition. And this is done not just for the sun, but it, to some degree it can be done for stars that are relatively close to the sun and the star is relatively large is where this has uh, been applied the best. So astronomers gain information uh, by analyzing the motion at the photosphere due to these sound waves that uh, roam back and forth um, in the star. Temperature, pressure, density, and composition. And then mathematical models of stars. Uh, physicists have laws of uh, how matter behaves. The stars on the main sequence are not uh, far away from conditions that can be approached in laboratories. You know, not exactly. Uh, uh, physicists can't uh, have as high a density as is in the sun at high temperature, but uh, they're, they're not extremes of uh, conditions inside normal stars. Um, so the laws of physics that are tested in laboratories and the laws of chemistry, the principles, can be applied to stars. Uh, this allows the building up of computer programs, computer models, that allow astronomers to calculate the conditions inside the star. These uh, computer models can give the size of the star, the surface temperature, and the luminosity. Uh, if you feed in as input to the program, mass and composition, uh, rotation rate a little bit. So the computer can uh, give a, a calculation that uh, 
tell us what conditions are inside the star and tell us what conditions are at the observable surface, the photosphere. Um, so the models are made and the, the computer programs are run and give a certain uh, data for output. And then how would that be verified? How can those models be verified? These computer models in a sense are like hypotheses. How do we verify that? Well, we want to do some experiment and observe what happens uh, based on or and compare it to the predictions of the hypothesis. So actual stars are observed and it is uh, you know, found that the computer models are good at predicting sizes of stars, surface temperature, and luminosity. Um, the initial models were refined. The model was changed to match the data from the stars. Um, so there are computer models of the interiors of stars and that uh, it's a lot easier for an astronomer to work with a computer than to try to somehow probe the interior of a star. Uh, we have no physical probe that can go there. We do have the sound wave probe, the uh, helioseismology, giving us information about the interior of stars, in, including composition, how much hydrogen and helium is in the core. Uh, it can be used somewhat to verify the age of the sun uh, based on the changing composition that's observed in the core of the sun. It does not have as much hydrogen as uh, the outer layers of the sun. It has more helium. So math models are important. Something that's in those math models is called the equation of state for the gas that's a, that the sun is made of. And it turns out the sun is not too far away from uh, the conditions of an ideal gas. Because it's so hot, it's not anywhere close to condensing to a liquid. Uh, if, if a gas is condensing to a liquid, it's not an ideal gas. But with an ideal gas, there is a connection between pressure and temperature, number of particles, the mass of a particle, and the volume of the gas. And it does turn out pressure is proportional to density. So if the density is larger, there are going to be more collisions occurring, more hits, and that's going to lead to a higher pressure. If the temperature is higher, those collisions are going to be more forceful, and that leads to a higher pressure. And then there is a, a little bit of a correction if we have, uh, if we consider the, the mass of a molecule, um, if we just talk about the high pressure due to hydrogen or pressure due to helium, that can be brought in. But for my students, we'll focus in on these two. Uh, if the density is higher, the pressure is higher. If the temperature is higher, the pressure is higher. Um, so what could cause the pressure to increase in the core of a star? Well, we might have a situation where the overlaying matter is kind of winning the uh, equilibrium balance and pressing in, make the density higher. That could cause the pressure to increase to the until it reaches the point where it can support the outer layers of the star. Or the temperature increases. If the temperature increases, the speed of the particles increases, and the collisions are more violent, more forceful, as the particles bounce off of each other. And more force means more pressure. It's creating more pressure in the situation. So let's talk about hydrostatic equilibrium again, just a little bit. And this is the case, you know, hydrostatic equilibrium, we're talking about a fluid, and the sun is a gas, it's a fluid, and a static situation, setting up an equilibrium, a balance of forces. So there's a force from the internal pressure that pushes outward, that tries to push these outer layers further away, and there's a weight, a force, of the overlaying material that's pressing in, wanting to compress the star. Um, and these two, two, these two forces are in balance for normal stars. And uh, for stars on the main sequence, basically there's a balance here. It's a very slow change that goes on. But uh, basically in balance, that we have a stable radius for the star because the weight pushing inward is balanced very closely by the force going outward from the collisions of the particles, uh, this pressure, internal pressure. So that's hydrostatic equilibrium again. The outward force equals the inward force. 
outward force equals the inward force. Um, so you ought to write down some questions about hydrostatic equilibrium or the uh, the side kind of quote unquote seismology that astronomers do. Um, we're not going to go over the details on how the data is collected or interpreted, but you should know from my class that uh, this uh, astro seismology can reveal information about the temperature, the density, the pressure, and the composition inside the stars. Again, there are other things that it can reveal, but those are the main uh, characteristics of interest to us. So with that, I'm going to uh, close this video. Again, ask your instructor some questions.